Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. For this episode, we will be dealing with the question, what does the Bible say we must do to be saved? This is part two of a three-part response made to an email sent to us by one of our listeners. I encourage you to listen to part one of this response, season four, episode 14, what does the Bible say we must do to be saved, before this one in order to gain a fuller understanding of the topic under discussion. In the email sent to us, I was asked to watch uh, a British Baptist teacher named David Pawson. In that video, he said that you needed to repent, believe, be baptized, and receive the Holy Spirit in order to be saved. In the previous episode, we dealt with belief and repentance and talked about the fact that belief comes before repentance and not afterwards. In this podcast, we'll be dealing with baptism and a topic which Mr. Paulson leaves out, confession. Following belief and repentance and before baptism, the scriptures teach us that we need to confess Jesus Christ. An example of this is found in Acts 8, verses 36 and 37. Let's go to Acts 8 and read verses 36 and 37. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Here the Ethiopian eunuch confessed his belief in Jesus as the Son of God to Philip. This may seem insignificant or something said in passing, but both Jesus and Paul stressed that confession was necessary. In Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, uh, we read that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Belief in our heart is private. People can't see belief. It is only when we tell people that we believe that others will know. Confession is made unto salvation. Jesus taught the same thing in Matthew 10, verse 32. Let's go to Matthew 10 and read verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. See, Jesus taught the same thing that Paul did, that we must confess in order to be saved. Following belief, repentance, and confession, now we're ready for baptism. I commend Mr. Pawson for his insistence that baptism is necessary to be saved, for it is a position most Baptists don't hold. The scriptures teach that baptism is a burial in water, the vehicle through which God cleanses us from sin. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 30, uh, verse 16, Acts 22, sorry, in Acts 22 uh, and in verse 16, we read, And now why do you wait? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. In Acts twenty-two sixteen, a believing, repentant Saul of Tarsus had been visited by Ananias, the man sent by Jesus. When Ananias got there, Paul was still in his sins. That is a necessary inference. Otherwise, verse 16 doesn't make any sense. Verse 16 teaches us that baptism remits sins, not by the power in the water, but by the power of God. It is at this point that we fully submitted to the will of God and come in contact with the blood of Christ, the forgiveness of sins. Mr. Pawson is right that we need to fully submit to God to be saved. Unfortunately, Mr. Pawson doesn't teach about confession, something required before baptism in order to obey God. In the next podcast, we will be dealing with the topic of receiving the Holy Spirit and its connection to salvation. But perhaps you're listening to this podcast and you're not a Christian. The brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. 
If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode. Searching the Scriptures has been brought to you by the East End Church of Christ, which meets at 3601 Victoria Park Avenue, Suite 200, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Our hours of service are Sunday at 10 a.m. for Bible study and 11 a.m. for morning worship, as well as Wednesday at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study. If you have any Bible questions that you would like to have answered during this podcast, you may email them to Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. That's Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Finally, if you'd like to catch up on any episode that you missed, you will find them at www.eastendchurch.org under the podcast tab found on the main page. I hope you found the few minutes that we spent together today useful in expanding your knowledge of what the Bible teaches. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Until you listen again, keep searching the Scriptures to learn what God wants you to do. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.